Tina Yandon lives in Millard, the little town that borders Highway 63. She used to volunteer for animal rescue groups when she lived in Kansas City. But Yandon probably never thought she'd need to rescue an animal so close to home. My mom was actually looking out this window um, and said, that, that truck just left something out and we, we thought at first it was something for that house that it's just recently been put up and um, they could be having construction still done. So I didn't think much about it. I thought, well, it's either leaving something for that house or someone's dumping some trash out or something they didn't want. Well, it turns out it was something they didn't want. In a box, just seven months old. It was a little dog that appeared to not have any eyes um, because it was, you know, covered in mats and leaves and you couldn't really see its face. That's when the puppy, who's now named Rags, life turned to riches. We were having a, a busy moment of, of, or a busy morning of appointments and uh, someone brought in a, a, a good Samaritan, brought in a dog they had found next to the side of the road. Um, and they could tell that this dog was suffering. It didn't look good or smell good at first. As we began to look at the dog, when we finally got him to where we could see his eyes, he had ulcers in his eyes from where hair mats had rubbed against his eyes. Um, he had an ear infection in both ears. He had terrible, horrible dermatitis and just miserable skin infection. He smelled, he smelled of mildew well, like he was rotting alive. Um, and he smelled so bad when I first saw him, yeah. I honestly thought it was not going to end well for him just on his smell alone. His hind legs were matted to himself in a bent knee position, so he could not straighten out his legs. Dr. Webb says it's likely a case of animal neglect and that Rags probably was ignored for his entire short life. Uh, a skeleton wearing fur and a nine being a sofa cushion with legs. Mm -hmm. um, so I probably would give him a one, one and a half. But this isn't the first case of dog dumping in the area. Dr. Webb says a huge part of the problem is the unwillingness of pet owners to spay and neuter their pets. This is a major community issue. When we still have members of our community that say, yes, everybody should spay and neuter their dogs and cats, but not my dog, not my cat then that's a big part of the problem, number one. And number two, when we have a situation where there is an unwanted pet, the other part of the community problem is when we have community members that think a solution to an unwanted pet is to sit it next to the highway. Despite what some may think, most dogs don't get a story like rags. Leaving a dog next to the highway is usually a death sentence. A dog is, is used to being provided with, you know, for food, love, and attention in a home, and they're not used to being a wolf that you know some people might assume they might be able to be in the wild because how long would the poor thing have been left out in the ditch without um, it couldn't move very well because it wasn't able to walk um, it makes me um, sad and disgusted that people would treat an animal that way there are many resources for pet owners in the area field of dreams rescue provides a wide variety of help for animals from obedience training for unruly pets to assisting in paying for pet food we want people to feel open um, and to bring us animals or to call us if they need help. Before it gets too bad, like it was for Rags. You gotta get the infection cleared up, but he's he's got a good future. I don't know how anyone could treat an animal that way. It's it's not right, it's not fair, and it's certainly not, not a good thing to see, but I'm just thankful that she did see it. He's a very nice dog too. 